I just want to shout out Chastity for taking the time out and helping to put us through to the outside world. Shout out to all the subscribers who have taken the time out to review and follow. And make sure you guys continue to show our love and support. There are a total of 190,600 women currently incarcerated in prison, housed in 473 correctional facilities throughout the United States compared to the 1,147,359 male population of men incarcerated throughout the United States among the 1,700 prison facilities, with Texas having the most prisons at a total of 313 facilities. There are a total of 52 women sitting on death row waiting to be executed, with the youngest person being Christia Pike, who is 48 years old. She is on death row for smashing another girl's skull on the concrete because she became jealous of the other girl for flirting with her boyfriend. Christia even kept parts of the victim's skull. Sexual abuse in female prisons is a major issue, with numerous reports and studies documenting widespread misconduct by prison staff and other inmates. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, thousands of incarcerated women report being sexually victimized annually, with many more incidents likely going unreported due to fear of retaliation from the prison officers or from the warden himself. For example, in March of 2022, the FBI raided the all-female prison located in Oakland, California, where the prison warden was caught running a club, allowing male prison guards to sexually abuse and assault female inmates. The warden was also caught having naked photos of female inmates on his work cell phone. The warden kicked off his secret operation by falsely promising female prisoners that he would transfer them to any other prison that they would like. And he would also falsely claim that he would help them get released home early only if they would have sex with him. The warden would not follow through with his promises, and he would even strip away any female inmates' belongings or privileges if they made any complaints about him or even attempted to tell any higher authorities. He would even transfer female inmates to more dangerous prisons if they did not want to have sex with him. The warden even went as far as sticking half-eaten candy canes in females' vaginal areas. He would eventually be sentenced in 2024 to 70 months in prison, and to pay a $15,000 fine. And two months later, the prison would close down, and the 605 female inmates were transferred to different prisons throughout the United States. Female inmates undergo extreme abuse by prison staff with male prison guards. Some male guards have been known to coerce female inmates into sexual acts in exchange for privileges or basic necessities, such as food, hygiene products, or visitation rights. This exploitation is a severe abuse of power and can have lasting psychological effects on the women. Male officers exploit their authority inappropriately, watching incarcerated women's nude bodies by standing in the dorm or shower areas, watching women undress and bathe, and commenting on their bodies. Prison staff would also fail to properly treat sick, ill, and pregnant female inmates that needed proper medical care. A former Georgia inmate in 2019, Tiana Hill, said she kept telling staff that she was pregnant when she was an inmate. She could feel her baby moving inside her and had missed her period. But she said the staff insisted she wasn't pregnant and made fun of her. When she finally gave birth, she was shackled around her stomach, wrists, and feet. After she gave birth, Hill said jail staff wrapped her child in dirty sheets and left. Hill eventually was taken to a hospital where she said she was allowed to see her son while handcuffed to a wheelchair. Five days after the delivery, on Hill's birthday, she was informed that her baby had died. In 2021, women in prison had a total of 753 live births, 46 miscarriages, and 11 abortions. Of the 753 live births, there were three newborn deaths, and nearly half of those 753 births were C-sections. In 2015, a Georgia prison doctor was caught lying on his application and work history after working several years with the prison. Dr. Nazaire had been previously suspended from practicing medicine in New York for his involvement in the death of four patients that he falsely diagnosed, and his clinic was sued for $3.3 million. When the New York Medical Board suspended Dr. Nazaire for three years, he became bankrupt and moved to Georgia and began living in a Holiday Inn hotel. When he applied for a temporary physician agency that partnered with the Georgia Department of Corrections, the prison hiring employer failed to read up on the doctor's background, and the doctor failed to mention that he was suspended from practicing medicine in New York. When he was hired, his starting salary was $163,000, and when he was employed in Georgia, 
he would falsely diagnose and improperly treat female prisoners, preventing them from seeking outside hospitals, which helped the prison save money on medical expenses for inmates. Because of this, the prison awarded Dr. Nazaire with a new $175,000 pay upgrade for saving the prison money. Because of the doctor's careless work, within a 10-month span, a total of nine female inmates died of complications, including cancer, infectious diseases, and heart issues. The doctor was fired and never charged for his actions. He later moved to New Jersey after being fired to attempt to practice medicine again. Not only is the prison staff an issue, but female prisons have gangs just like male prisons, which include the Latin Queens, Bloods, Crips, and MS-13. <laughs> Take that shit. Oh! Take that shit. Baba cut up. Oh. Yeah, so. uh, out the gate. Fuck you mean. Fuck you mean, bro. Charkita Cooper, who was an active blood member serving a seven year sentence, got into an altercation with her cellmate when her cellmate refused to share her food. Cooper beat up her cellmate and bit off the top portion of her ear. Another altercation occurred when prison staff caught Cooper holding another female inmate at knife point, forcing her to call her mom to send her $10,000 or she would stick a sharpened toothbrush in the other female inmate's private area. But a more crucial story is when 25-year-old Selena Holmes in 2020 was in a relationship with 31-year-old Arthur Caulfield, who was at the time serving a 15-year prison sentence for a bank robbery, and they were both in a gang called Young and Paid. While Arthur was serving his time, he scammed the Charles Schwab Bank out of $11 million. He called the bank from a cell phone while in his prison cell and acted like he was Sidney Kimball a well-known movie producer worth a billion dollars. He convinced the bank to wire him $11 million. With the money, he bought a $4.4 million house, a $398,000 Lamborghini, and he gave Selena $15,000, bought her a Mercedes Benz and a high-rise penthouse, where her rent was $2,887 a month. All while he was in prison, Selena would help move his money around to prepare for when Arthur would finally come home in 2022. One day, Arthur sent a hit on a man who was stalking Selena, so two of Arthur's friends did a drive-by shooting in Atlanta, where Selena was the lookout and getaway driver. The shooting left a 37-year-old man shot nine times and paralyzed from the waist down. All of them were caught, and Selena received a 15-year sentence for her involvement, while both shooters received 30 years and 15 years. Arthur was eventually caught for his scamming, and when he was finally released, he was put in federal custody and sentenced to 135 months in federal prison. While Selena was serving her time, she had a sexual relationship with the prison counselor, where Selena would pay him $1,000 a week to smuggle in drugs and outside items banned in prison. One day, the counselor arrived at the prison for his shift, and upon entering, officers checked the counselor's bag at the prison entrance on the morning of April 28th. A search of his car then turned up a package with 17.5 grams of methamphetamine strips and 21.4 grams of marijuana. He was also found to have in his car and bag perfume, lip gloss, disposable contact lenses, tobacco, tea bags, bubble gum, pop rocks, and two red bandanas. The counselor was immediately fired and sent to jail. Selena was put in solitary confinement and transferred to another prison. Her expected release date is September 2035. I'm 24 years old. I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm here at CIW, and I'm looking to meet new people. So hit me up. Let me know if you want to talk.